Wooden Wheels, Iron Men, and Strong Animals describes the early Teamsters. Welcome to another edition of Toy Talk. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and today's episode is about semi-trucks. I have talked about trucking companies and revealed their rolling stock, but I think it is about time that I talked about the actual semi-truck tractor and trailer combination. A wagon has a minimum of two axles, one at the front and one at the rear, having wheels on each corner. A semi-trailer has one or more axles at the rear of the trailer and some kind of landing gear at the front of the trailer. That is basically the definition of a semi-trailer. The actual definition is... I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's back up the truck and go back in time to the wooden wheels and the wooden wagons that built America. Moving freight to provide everything from food to machinery, household goods, and needed equipment for the rancher, miner, farmer, household, and storekeeper was a necessity until the internal combustion engine was invented and actually made practical, the horse, ox, and mule moved the large and small wagons over the roads and trails of the world. Driven by the mule skinner or bull whacker, the wooden wagons and carts delivered the freight. Steam ushered in an era of new transportation. Steamboats were capable of carrying great loads, but were confined to navigable waterways. Then came the iron horse and the railroad. But these two methods of transportation had their limitations. Wooden wagons and all that they entailed were still needed to move the freight to their final destination. Today, large and small trucks are employed to move freight instead of animal-powered wagons. But just who changed us away from the animal-powered wagon to the semi-truck and trailer combination? A bicycle inventor by the name of Alexander Winton had a company in Cleveland, Ohio in 1891. Winton was successful in making bicycles, but he was fascinated by the new self-propelled motor vehicles, he thought that they could be more than just people movers. So he went to work and soon unveiled his motor wagon to the press in 1896. Winton needed a company, so he establishes the Winton Motor Carriage Company in 1897. In 1898, Winton's company was the first American company to sell an automobile to the general public. Also in 1898, Winton made 22 cars, but found he had a delivery problem. What Winton needed was an automobile hauler. Problem? None were available in 1898. What to do? Of course, the solution was to invent one. So, Winton invented one. Winton's idea was to take a two-wheeled cart and attach it to a four-wheeled, specially adapted automobile. Put the new car to be transported on top of the cart. Brilliant idea! The semi-truck tractor and trailer combination was born. With Winton's invention of the automobile hauler, Alexander Winton became credited with inventing the semi-trailer. However, Winton didn't really know what he invented, nor how revolutionary it really was to transportation and the future. All Winton knew 
was he needed a stronger engine to power his auto hauling semi-trailer truck. So he focused on improving engine designs instead of improving the trailer. Enter August Charles Fruhoff. Fruhoff picked up Winton's car hauler idea. Sensing there was money to be made, Fruhoff took Winton's idea and developed it into the largest trailer manufacturing company in America. To begin with, Fruhoff improved Winton's car hauler semi-trailer truck. In 1914, Fruhoff was asked by a friend to build a carriage big enough to haul a boat. Traditional wagon designs would not work. So Fruhoff used Winton's idea and set to building a carriage with an attachment above the tow vehicle's rear axle and axles at the rear of the carriage. Fruhoff officially called this carriage a semi-trailer. He then attached his carriage to a Model T Ford and turned his Model T Ford into a semi-truck tractor. Now this combination had a name, the semi-truck tractor and trailer combination. In 1918, Fruhoff created the Fruhoff Trailer Company. When Fruhoff continued producing the semi-trailer for additional uses by other companies. Unfortunately, the semi-trailer still had a major drawback, attachment to the tow vehicle. One man alone could not uncouple or couple a semi-trailer from its tractor. Several types of attachments were invented, such as the Martin rocking fifth wheel and used with some success. But it wasn't until John C. Endenbrock, an engineer at Trailmobile, took the current fifth wheel ideas and invented a new type which made the task of coupling and uncoupling a semi-trailer easier. Prior to the Endenbrock fifth wheel, three or more men and jacks were required to couple and uncouple a semi-trailer to the semi-tractor. Now, only a truck driver was needed. Endenbrock's fifth wheel was patented in 1919 and has seen very few changes and is still in use today. For more details about the development of the fifth wheel, see my video with the link in the description below. Once this last problem was ironed out, the race was on to build bigger and better trailers with bigger and more powerful truck tractors to pull them. And here we go, folks. This is the wonderful M2 release. Now, M2 I have not talked about, but uh, they have made some pretty cool trucks, although I think their sizing is a little bit off, just a little bit in scaling. I don't think they're quite as accurate on their trucks as their cars. Their cars are amazing. And it's loaded up with M2 cars. Now, the cars, the only one that came with it is this one. The rest of them I have added just to fill out the truck and make it look better. But it is for Chevrolet used cars and trucks. They're, back then, they had the OK used cars. That was their big brand. It's got the Chevrolet cab in front, and it's got a vintage car trailer. Really, really sharp set. And for car trailers, they're hard to find in 64 scale. The back here has the ramp that goes, you can push it down. There's two little pegs that hold it up. Now, I don't recommend really using this that much because if you do, these things spread out and then before you know it, you can't, it really actually just won't stay up. So I just leave it alone. There's also two hooks here where ramps go out so you can actually unramp the cars. This would also go up some so that you can get in there. Now, no working hydraulics, pistons, or anything like that on this trailer, but, you know, it has the right functionality. The OK Cars graphic is right here. OK Used Cars. That's such a cool thing that UK that Chevrolet had back in the day. 
Chevrolet logo here, used cars and trucks, satisfaction, value, and selection, because Chevy was, they just didn't push the new cars, they, they pushed the used cars, and they were proud of them. It has spoke Dayton wheels on the rear with a vintage uh, bias ply tread pattern. Underneath, you got the M2 logo. And these points here are what mounted it because this did come mounted on a display base with a display case. It's got landing gear here, which isn't really tall enough when it's unhitched, but it kind of gets the idea. On the front, you can see there's the front of the car and the open space just like on the back. Plus, on the back, you can see the brake lights, turn signals. Passenger side, same graphics and same everything as the other. Now, the base of this trailer, I'll give you, is die cast, but the sides and the top is plastic. Now, they're trying to keep these cheaper vehicles, so that is more common as all that plastic. But also, this would be a little bit harder if they actually did it in die cast to make it work. Now we'll pick up the cab here, and this is the Chevy Spartan. It has the OK Used Cars logo and the Chevrolet logo there. Chevrolet and Spartan right here, tampoed really nice. Turn signal up there, and then door handles and grab bars are tampoed, plus the fuel tank. It's kind of funny, you got a fuel tank there, plus fuel tanks here. Eh. But then again, Chevy did use... A pickup truck cab for a heavy truck so that's where they put the fuel tanks on the pickup so it makes sense underneath you've got the 1960 1959 Chevrolet LCF used under license and then it has the drive shaft and rear differential right there copyright 2012 cast lining that's how old this is the 1959 Chevy from M2 was back in 2012. I haven't seen these in a while, but you can still find them from time to time. It's got the 50s Chevy truck logo on tampo there, Chevrolet written on the grill, turn signals marker lights are tampoed orange, but the headlights are dual individual rounds on each side, quad headlights. You got a tampo of orange on the turn signals, and they're chrome plated. Hard plastic window with a nice little interior inside you can see over here five spoke dayton wheels with the vintage tread pattern and then the fuel tanks fifth wheel will accommodate basically m2 trailers it's a little bit too small if you wanted to put dcp trailers but just taking a little uh, drill bit and hone it out a little and you're good to go they tampoed the fuel caps silver and to round out a really nice model now let's go on and set it off by itself so we can look at the other side and man isn't it sharp i'll put the cars back on so it looks cool now not all of these cars are chevrolets but they look good sitting on this truck side and you can see there are bars up there that hold the vehicle so they don't roll off. However, be careful. The cars can still roll off of the, over those bumps. And that is the 1959 Chevrolet Spartan single axle cab pulling a single axle vintage new car hauler. Although it's set up for OK used cars, Chevrolet's used cars and trucks. Most of the dealers had one of these signs at their dealership as they were selling used cars and trucks proudly it is a 164 scale model that was made by m2 just think that model of a 1950s 1960s car carrier has more in common with the first semi-trailer than modern stinger steered car haulers that are common on the roads today it just goes to show you how one seemingly small invention of necessity brings other inventors out to change and improve it. We have the Stinger Steered Car Hauler today. What will the future inventors come up with to replace it? It also goes to show that just how a single invention can build an entire industry far far beyond the imagination of the original inventor. 
from Alexander Witten's first car hauler, just look at how big the trucking industry has become. In 2022, the truck trailer market was $29.5 billion. The truck manufacturing market was $250 billion. And the freight moving by truck industry was $875.5 billion. Do you think that Alexander Witten could have ever imagined that his tiny one car hauler built to deliver his new Winton motor wagon would grow that big. Guys, I wish that I had some of these little car haulers left to sell as they were a great piece with a great price point, but they haven't been out in a few years. However, their lack of production leads them to higher value on the secondary market. This is great for your collection as it is now more valuable. For more tips on how you can add value to your collection, grab my free report on tips for valuing your collection with the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching everyone. Please go on and smash that like button, share this video with your followers, and subscribe to my channel for more videos on trucking. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and I'll be back with another video soon.